and welcome to snowy Calgary, Alberta. We're broadcasting live from the Ice House at Wind Sports Canada Olympic Park. Tonight we bring to you the Wind Sport World Push Challenge presented by the Calgary Hotel Association and Sport Check. My name is Tara Sloan. I will be your host this evening and an exciting evening we have in store for you as we look to the future and celebrate the incredible past of the sport of bobsleigh. Now tonight we previewed the World Cup season that starts next week right here in Calgary. It culminates with the big prize for all the bobsleigh and skeleton athletes. Of course, we're talking about the 22nd Winter Olympic Games in Sochi, Russia. And it was 90 years ago today in Paris, France, the FIBT was formed tonight. We look back at the history of the sport from how the tracks were built to how the sleds and the athletes have developed. And finally, to our big show this evening, the Wind Sport World Push Challenge, where we crown the best brake man and woman in the world. As you can see, the push does not always go right. Now, the incentive for these athletes tonight, well, number one, they are racing for cash. And number two, this up for grabs, this Omega Olympic watch. And then we're talking about some serious hardware here, these championship belts as well, and serious, serious bragging rights up for grabs. There are two other members of our broadcast team this evening. First, I would like to introduce to you two-time Olympian and Olympic silver medalist, bobsleigh pilot, Helen Upperton. Thanks, Tara. So we're here in the Ice House at Calumpic Park. This facility was built by Windsport in 2000, and it's one of only three state-of-the-art indoor push facilities where the sliding athletes can train their starts. It's one of the reasons why Canada always has fast pushes. It's also one of the reasons why I wound up on the podium at the Vancouver 2010 Olympics. So let's head to the start, where the third member of our broadcast team is going to be spending some time with the athletes. Nick Gismondi, how's it looking over there? Oh, Helen, it's great. And the atmosphere in this arena right now is absolutely incredible. It's got all the feel of a heavyweight fight mixed with an unbelievable World Cup. And the start, well, this is obviously where it all begins. I'm excited. The fans are excited. I know you guys are excited. And Tara, if I'm in a tux, you know it's a big event. <laughs> Where's my tux? That's my question. It is the 2013 Winsport World Push Challenge. So much more to come this evening. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We are live from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. The 2013 Windsport World Push Challenge. Uh, Windsport, we have an incredible opportunity tonight to talk about all that this uh, has to offer. Uh, Dr. Stephen Norris uh, is the Windsport Vice President of Sport. Very few people as well versed as you are. Good evening. Good evening. Let's talk about the 88 Olympics. Uh, Calgarians so very, very proud of the legacy of the games. Uh, and Windsport really was built out of that. Certainly, it was a tipping point for Calgary. I mean, the foresight to host the games, to go through that process, and truly that word legacy, Calgary is really the living embodiment of that, where the facilities are used daily, not only by our high-performance high athletes, but by the general public as well. Let's talk about some of uh, the facilities that existed back then that are still in use today. Well, the ski jumps have gone through various transformations. We have a very passionate ski jumping community that continually contribute to the upkeep of the jumps. The ski hill itself is absolutely a, a jewel in the crown for us to be able to utilize with a population of a million just down the road. And then the ice house, which was uh, produced in the 2000s for us, has become really another iconic piece for us to train daily for our national teams. We're going to learn uh, a lot more about wind sport and uh, all that it provides coming up in the next little bit. Dr. Norris will be with me. Now, many of the athletes here tonight will be competing in Sochi, I guess about eh, 75 days from now. But there is a lot to do between now and then. Here's Helen Upperton with a look at the road to Sochi. Well, the road to Sochi begins right here in Calgary with stop number one on the World Cup Tour. My home track of Calgary is not one of the hardest tracks in the world. Making the start and negotiating the upper third of the track, the keys to being fast here. Stop number two is just outside of Salt Lake City, Utah, the Park City track. Also played host to the first women's Olympic two-man event in 2002. It's the shortest track on the circuit, but paradoxically, it's one of the fastest. The tour next crosses the United States to Lake Placid, New York. Placid is famous for its bobsleigh tradition, two-time Olympic host city, not to mention a very challenging bobsleigh track. We've seen crashes occur all the way up in corner three. 
Following the holiday break, racing picks up in Europe with a stop in Winterberg, Germany. While the course is fairly straightforward, the weather always seems to play a part in deciding the outcome of the race. Next off to St. Moritz, Switzerland, the birthplace of bobsleigh and presently the only natural track on the circuit. It has a famous horseshoe corner. Look at the aerial view of this corner. It is a thrill for drivers. You need to carry speed out of this exit to be fast at the bottom of the track. Next, Eagles Austria, just outside of Innsbruck, another two-time host city of the Olympic Games. This track's all about the athleticism and the push. Even if you handle Kreisel and Curve 9 perfectly, you won't be in the medals unless you drop the hammer at the start. The World Cup concludes back in Germany on the scenic track of Königsee. This track hugs the side of the mountain and the sleds lose very little elevation on the top half, meaning the drive has to be perfect, especially through the very tight transitions of the S-curves. Of course, Sochi, Russia is the ultimate goal at the end of a very long season. It is a beautifully designed track, great architecture, but the weather is very unpredictable at the world's newest track. And these teams, they have three uphill sections to navigate. It's going to be in a very exciting race. Despite a training week that just occurred, there's going to be lots of uncertainty when the athletes arrive in February for the Winter Olympic Games. I can't wait to watch this race. So I've managed to survive two Olympic se preparation seasons, eight races before the Olympic Games is a long, long journey. We're really excited to get there. This was the first stop, the first time the athletes qualified this morning. We had a great women's qualification. There weren't really a lot of surprises. We're going to take a look at some highlights of our top three. This was a great push by Hannah Marion from Belgium. We have three different nations in the top three. She qualified with a time of 5.78. 20-year-old Sanna Decker, brand new Dutch athlete, coming in second with 5.72. And after a two-year hiatus, returning Olympic gold medalist Heather Moyes from Canada with a significant lead, will be pushing last in tonight's final. She qualified with a time of 5.536 seconds. And lots more to come from the Windsport World Push Challenge. The women event gets underway. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the 2013 Winsport World Push Challenge presented by Sport Check. I can feel the atmosphere heating up here, but nobody is in a hotter spot than our Nick Gizmondi. Nick, I think it's time to make some introductions. Tara, we are absolutely ready. Are you guys all ready? Oh, the crowd is ready, and that means it is time to kick off the Winsport World Push Challenge. My question to all of you is, Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to push? Let's meet your nine contestants, the women athletes competing in this one. Representing Belgium, having slid for two years, she's also an athletics long jumper, a physiotherapist, and she's got her eye on Sochi, ladies and gentlemen, Evelyn Berkman. Evelyn qualified in ninth with a time of 6.037. Your second athlete qualifying in the eighth position with a time of 5.861. From Austria, sliding in her very first season, and also a track athlete, ladies and gentlemen, Viola Kaiser. Qualifying in the seventh position with a time of 5.860. Representing Austria in her sixth year of sliding. Ladies and gentlemen, Inga 
person. And the hometown athlete representing Canada, qualifying in the sixth position with a time of 5.847. Ladies and gentlemen, Ashley Schumann. <laughs> Qualifying in the fifth position with a time of 5.842. Representing the Netherlands, her fourth year of sliding brings her here, ladies and gentlemen, Judith Fisch. In her third year of sliding, qualifying in the fourth position with a time of 5.802 from all the way across the pond in Great Britain, Kelly Denyer. Qualifying in the third position with a time of 5.788. This athlete from Belgium was a silver medalist at the Beijing Olympic Games in the 4x100. She's in her second year of sliding. From Belgium, Hannah. Qualifying in the second position with a tie with a time of 5.723, representing the Netherlands. She's the comeback kid after breaking her back in November of 2012. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean. And your athlete qualifying in the number one position with the time of 5.536, representing Canada in her fifth year of sliding. Ladies and gentlemen, Heather. Ladies and gentlemen, we have much more from the Windsport World Push Challenge when we come back. These ladies are your top nine competitors, and they will be competing for the belt, for the watch, for the hat, and all the prize money when we come back to Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It is the 2013 Windsport World Push Challenge. Welcome back. Uh, the action is almost about to get underway, uh, but we are back with Dr. Steve Norris, Windsport's Vice President of Sport, uh, talking more about Windsport and, and what Windsport is, because it's not a building or a few campuses. It's sort of a movement. It certainly is. Obviously, 25 years since its inception, the legacy has grown to become more than just the facilities, to actually now embody the people, the expertise. And as we move to become the Winter Sport Institute, we hope that we'll lead the entire planet. We're bringing together people with the actual buildings. Uh, let's talk about sort of the tangible uh, vision and mission statement of, of Winsport. 
Well, obviously, the vision for us is to become the world's leading winter sport institute. And what that really means is to bring together both the facilities, the programs, across all age groups, from our learning programs all the way through to the national teams, but also to do that with a very clear, sustainable business model, because we want to be around forevermore. So that means uh, opening things up to the public, and we'll learn more about that a little bit later, and also just becoming the home that it is to the elite athletes of the world. For sure. <laughs> For sure. Well, speaking of elite athletes, we have some of the best break men and women in the world. Now, Helen, you and I were talking earlier about how a bad start can make for a terrible race. Am I right? Yeah, 100%. Uh, in 2010 at the Vancouver Olympics, I was very fortunate to share the top of the podium with my Canadian teammate and fellow pilot, Kaylee Humphreys, and both of us would agree that we couldn't have got up there without our incredible brakemen, Heather Moyes and Shelly Ann Brown. The sport of bobsleigh these days is all about speed and power. Let's take a look. So the start of bobsleigh is also how it got its name. They used to bob back and forth to get the sled moving, hence the name bobsleigh as we know it today. But oh, how times have changed in all of athletics. There may be no better example of the relationship between power and finesse. The first 50 meters or so in bobsleigh requires the strength of a weightlifter, the speed of a sprinter, and the precision of a gymnast. These athletes train all summer long, both outdoors and indoors, in these state-of-the-art ice house facilities to prepare for the fast push times. But the sprint in this sport is all performed on a slippery sheet of ice. The specially designed shoes with 375 razor-sharp spikes are only 1 16th of an inch. They provide the grip that allow these athletes to power the sled at full speed across the ice. You get the slightest thing wrong, and it's all over before, well, before you even start. So just how important is the start? Some say every hundredth of a second gained or lost at the push magnifies three times on the way down the track. The success of the sport of bobsleigh can often be decided after the first 50 meters. A sport that was once the property of rich thrill seekers and daredevils is now dominated by the world's best athletes. Make no mistake, the equipment is important, but 21st century bobsleigh is first and foremost about athleticism. We have some incredible athletes in the field today, but we can't host a great event without some rules and regulations. Tara, let's hear about them. Yes, all the athletes will be adhering to some very strict rules this evening. The official rules go as follow. Only bobsleigh spikes are allowed on the ice. Bobsleigh helmets also mandatory. The 30 second clock will be used. The push must commence in this time. There will not be a second chance if the athlete errors and the start goes when the athlete puts their helmet on. Timing will be conducted to the 1,000th of a second. In a bobsleigh race, it is to the 100th, but these races are so tight, it is the 1,000th. And in the case of a tie for first place, there will be a push off. It is time to get the competition underway. Let's take a look at our start list for the women's competition this evening. <laughs> Starting first, Evelyn Verkamen from Belgium, numbers two, Viola Kleiser of Austria. Racing third, Inga Versen, also of Austria. Going fourth this evening, Ashley Schumat, number five from the Netherlands, Judith Wies. Number six, Kelly Denier. Racing seventh this evening, Hannah Emily Marion. Number eight, Sana Decker. And going ninth, Heather Moyes. Nick, without further ado, let's get this party started. We are all set here at the start, and it is time. Evelyn is standing next to me right now. She's got some experience. She's ready to go. You feeling good? Yes, I'm feeling very good. You going to win this thing? I hope. <laughs> all right, she is ready to go. We will get her out to the sleigh, and we will get her pushing our first competitor, Evelyn Verkamen. Now, mind you, Evelyn uh, competed in long jump as well. She's a physiotherapist and is in just her second year sliding. The start is oh so important. Helen, what's going through her mind right now? Well, hopefully she's going to be able to play off the crowd. It's going to be a lot of noise. I hope everybody down there is going to make a lot of noise for these athletes. All right, she is going to be pushing to the song Tsunami. 
15 seconds away. And she's off. Looks good from here. He's 6004 for her, Helen. That's faster than her qualifying heat. Great job. You have to understand, these athletes are pushing 175 kilos. It's the same weight as a two-man bobsleigh. Only one person pushing all that load. Great job. What did you think of that? It was good. It was better than the qualifications. I'm satisfied. Atmosphere is nice, so I'm having fun. Are you ready for the World Cup in Calgary next week? The start race for the, the long season to the Olympics? Yes, we're completely ready. All right, head to the winner's box and let's see how the rest of the event goes. All right, Viola Kleiser, you are next to go. It's a touch, okay? Well, looks awesome. <laughs> you look awesome. Are you ready to go? You feeling good? Of course. All right, you get in that sleigh and we will see it. Your time to beat 6004. Viola Kleiser. She qualified at 5861. Her time to beat is 6 Point zero zero four. Also a track athlete in her first season pushing. Oh, All right, Helen, she looks ready to go up here. Yeah, this is a great way for, we have a couple brand new athletes that are doing, this is her first season of bobsleigh, so uh, give, her, give her lots of noise, give her a push. <laughs> Her start time, Helen. Pretty good from up here. Pretty good. She was very close with her teammate in the qualifications. <laughs> Coming to an abrupt stop up here. So she's leading all the way from the load. You could see the green clock show up, which means she was ahead from the very, from the very beginning. Ducking for uh, some aerodynamics there as you came through the bottom. How did that feel? Well, if it good. The atmosphere is great here. And this is your first season. Are you, what does it feel like to do an event like this in your first year of bobsleigh? Actually, it's great. I mean, this is my first competition ever, so I really enjoyed it. Well, congratulations. Head to the winner's box. All right, Inga Versen, you are up next. How do you feel right off the top? I feel pretty good. Now, you are a track athlete, so does that help with the push? Obviously, right? Yes, maybe. All right, we want to see it. Hop in there. You know what your time to beat is? Let's see how you can do. All right, Inga Versen. Uh, you know what? I love her song, Helen. She'll be pushing to Barbie Girl by Aqua. I feel like that would be your song as well. Yeah, I have to admit, I did play with Barbies when I was little. My, <laughs> my sister used to steal all the pretty ones. These two Austrian athletes actually were, were only a thousandth apart in the qualification, so let's see if this is gonna be as tight of a second run for the final. Let's make some noise over there, let's go. All right, her time to beat is 5896. She's off, crowd going wild for her. We'll see what that start time comes out to be. She's coming to you, Helen. A five, nine, two, seven. That is good for second place right now. Second position drops yeah. slightly behind her teammate, a little bit slower than her qualifying run. You can see how powerful these athletes have to be to get this 175 kilo sled moving. Just running it nice and deep, good low, ducking as she heads down through the bottom. So that was 175 kilos. How heavy does that sled feel pushing it alone? Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard, but great job. How did it feel and how was the crowd over there? Yes, I feel proud to be here and that's fun. And are you ready for the Olympics? Oh, yes. Congratulations. All right, back up here at the start. Ashley Schumacher from uh, Canada. That should get a big round of applause from the crowd. What? You were also a long track speed skater. You're real comfortable on the ice. How does pushing compare to that? A little uh, way shorter, 50 meters instead of 500 meters. It's way nicer. <laughs> All right, get in there. Good luck. You know what your time to beat is right now. 
She is going to be pushing to Sandstorm by Darude. Helen, this is her home track. She literally trains on this. She knows it well. She knows how fast to go. Any advantage to that for her? Well, huge advantage for Ashley. This is her first international competition. It's right here in the Ice House, the WWP. She learned how to push here, and uh, this is a, a great start to her first World Cup season as a Canadian uh, bobsleigh brakeman. All right, she is out of the blocks and pushing hard. Crowd going wild. Let's see what she's got. Five, eight, one, five. That is good for the lead right now. What a nice run by her. Little bit slow with the hand transition, but head down, digging it out on the flat there. She had a little trouble loading in the qualifiers and looked like this time in the final, she got in nice and smooth. Ashley. Your first international bobsleigh competition, and it's a push competition in the Ice House. How was it? It's, it's been awesome. It's a rush. I love how you guys have it set up in here. It's super motivating, and yeah. And the crowd, the crowd is loud. Why'd you pick the song you chose? Just get me more pumped up. <laughs> and you are trying to break into a strong Canadian program. There's a great history of uh, athletes in this team. How, how does that feel to try to, to qualify for the World Cup team and the Olympic team in such a strong program? It's tough. Everybody's very good. Everyone has a lot of experience. So I have to give it my all every single day to keep, my, keep myself in the running. Great job. Head to the winner's box. Nick, back to you. All right. Thanks, Helen. We are at the start with Judith Vish. You are ready to go. I'm ready to go. And you study chemistry. How important is that to pushing a bobsled? Not at all. <laughs> I didn't think so. Have a good race out there. Good luck. All right, Judith B. our next competitor, all the way from the Netherlands. You got to love this song choice, Push It by Salt and Pepper. I have a feeling this song is on a lot of bobsleigh brakeman's playlists while they warm up to push for the World Cup competition. Her time to beat is 5-8-1-5. She qualified in the fifth position with a 5-8-4-2. This is her fourth year sliding, and in addition to studying chemistry, she's also been a track and field athlete from 92 to 2010. She knows how to go fast. All of that, maybe not the chemistry, track and field is going to come into play here at the start. Again, that time to beat, 5-8-1-5. She's in the blocks, ready to go. The Netherlands is another nation with a great history of strong push athletes. They're known for having fast starts, both the men and the women. All right, she's off a little bit of a slip at the start right there. Let's see if she can make it up. Time to be 5815, and she has. A 5 7 4 seven. That is good for first. Huge improvement from the qualifier this morning, Judith. Great job, Judith. Big improvement at the push. How'd that feel? I know this morning you were having a little trouble uh, with the handles, and how did it feel for the final? It was much better. It was not perfect, but it was much better. Yeah, you had a big time improvement, and how was the crowd? Did they help, help get you going faster? Uh, definitely. They were, really, they were a good sport. Yes. And the World Cup coming up next week. You guys ready? You ready for the Calgary World Cup competition? Definitely, we are. Head to the winner's box. Nick, back to you at the start. All right, well, there you have it. That is your new leader. She had a little bit of a slip off the start, but she makes up for it. Judith Vich from the Netherlands is in the number one position. Schumach from Canada in second. Welcome back to the 2013 Winsport World Push Challenge. This place, the Mark and McPhail Center here at Winsports Canada Olympic Park is absolutely teeming with Olympic athletes. And I'm not talking about just here in the ice house, but if you look to my right, you would see four rinks. And those rinks right now are housing over 60 women's teams and girls teams from all over the world. We're talking about Wickfest. Now, Haley Wickenheiser, Canadian hockey legend, I don't know too many people who would want to tangle with her. 
But wait, maybe there's one guy who's crazy enough. More pucks, most posts wins. We'll take a tie. We'll take a tie. Yeah, Thank you so much. Good times. Right. <laughs> Good job, girls. Good luck. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but Nick, I, boy, oh boy, you did pretty well against a Canadian hockey legend. I, I was always good at the post game. It pretty much highlighted my career. I, I hit him all the time in games, but I think it was a tie. There's a little bit of controversy. You might have nicked the second post, so I, I think you actually did win. I thought I did. Home, home country advantage. Exactly, oh. exactly. The, the tournament going on over there, it's fantastic. Not only does it highlight what an amazing facility that this is here, but also, more importantly, the growth of women's hockey, which we talked about it. It's incredible right now. Yeah, it's the fastest growing sport in North America right now. We've got 62 teams from around the world. We've even got two teams from Mexico, from Finland. And uh, not only is it a hockey tournament, but it's a festival of the game. And these girls are getting access to some amazing presenters and world-class talent. All right, any, uh, any predictions for the upcoming Olympic Games? Well, of course, Canada. Oh, Canada, oh, I don't know. Again, maybe it's a tie. I don't know. Haley, thank you so much, and thank you all for, also for uh, for what you're doing for the sport of women's hockey here in Canada. All right, thanks. This is a great night tonight. Thank you. All right. All right, let's take a look at the leader right now, and we will get you right back to the action. Judith Vish, she is in that first spot right now, and she is ready to go. She is your leader with a 5-7-4-7. All right, coming up next from... Great Britain. Let's hear a big round of applause for Kelly Denyer. You're getting a little bit of love from the Canadian fans here. You ready to go? Yeah, definitely. All right, thoughts so far. How about the emotion of this venue right now? Obviously, it's packed full. There's tons of people. It feels like a heavyweight fight, right? Yeah, definitely. Give it my best. <laughs> She's ready to go. They're so polite in Great Britain. Get in there. Let's see how good you do. You know what your time to beat it. It is 5 7 four, seven. Kelly Denyer in her third year of sliding. Started bobsled right after, well, she saw an advertisement. She will be pushing to come with me by Pete Diddy. British women's bobsleigh, one of the strong programs. They have a history of success. Nicola Minicello winning the World Championships in Lake Placid in 2009. Continuing on, we've got some powerhouse break when it's great to see all these different nations in the finals. All right, here she goes. Time to beat 5747. Kelly Denyer is off. Let's see what she's got. 5775. That does not overtake first place. She is currently in the second position. Head down, digging it out. Falling a little bit behind the Dutch athlete. Still a great push time. You can see her catching her breath and riding in the sled on the way back up, checking the clock. How did that, how did that push feel for you? Ah, I could have gone bad, but it was good. <laughs> sled feels pretty heavy, 175 kilos all alone. <laughs> I hear that you, got, you decided to try bobsleigh because you saw it on a, on a TV commercial or something? Uh, no, my dad got an advert through the post and thought I'd give it a go. And <laughs> and here you are. And what does it feel like to push at an event like this as a brakeman? It's very uh, brakeman specific. Yeah, no, it's, it's really nice to get a bit. Well, great job. Back to you, Nick. All right. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. You're, you're next up. You're feeling the pressure. You're, you know, you're in that third spot here. You got to be feeling good, right? My legs are okay, so I'm ready. You're pumped. I'm pumped. All right. Get out there. Have some fun. Good luck. Hannah Marianne, she qualified in that third spot, a 5-7-8-8 in her second year of sliding. She competed in the 2013 World Champs, and as I said earlier, a silver medalist. Not in the Winter Olympics, the Summer Olympic Games, 2008, the Beijing Games. 
She got silver in the 4 by 100. It is so awesome to see three nations sitting in the top three positions. Belgium, a big story at the Vancouver 2010 Games where they debuted as a team at the Olympics. And now here with athletes of this caliber is pretty awesome. All right, she's out of the start. Looks good here. Let's see if she's got the lead or not. A 5-8-1-9, that puts her in the fourth position. A little bit slower than her qualifying heat and, and actually falls behind Judith. You can see the turnover of this incredible track athlete as she moves the sled down the hill. The ability to run it nice and far because of that top end speed. Not quite enough to move into first, but a great job from this Belgium athlete. So what's, what's it like to go from a summer sport to a winter sport? Yeah, it's not easy. Um, it's really cold. I'm used, I'm used to um, yeah, 30 degrees, but it's okay. And what, what did that push feel like? Were you happy? I'm not happy, no. I've disappointed myself a little bit, but that's okay. Well, you have a chance in a week to make up for it when the World Cup starts at the top of the track in Calgary. Are you, are you, is the team ready? The team is ready. Great job. Back to you, Nick. Well, listen, uh, pushing is important, but getting a good night's sleep is just as important. I know I needed one, and I got to thank John Jackson from the Calgary Hotel Association for the presidential suite. That was very kind of you. We're glad to make sure that you're here and satisfied and nice and comfortable. We got to make sure you look and good, sound good tonight. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, Calgary, it's a great city. It's a very welcoming city, as is of all of Canada. How important is it for you guys to have an event like this in your hometown, and what role do the hotels really play in it? Well, we're, the, we're where all the athletes stand. So we want to make sure that we continue to have spectacular events like the World Push Championship to make sure that we get more and more guests here. It showcases the city and it truly shows the energy of the city, and we're, our goal is to bring more people to Calgary as a result of this. It's a big couple weeks. You have this event, and then next weekend you have a World Cup event for the bobsled. What's the uh, best fun thing to do in the city of Calgary if you're coming in to visit? I'd say the, the winter bobsleigh run. There you go. You can actually bobsleigh. Give it a shot. Thank you so much, John, and uh, good luck with everything. Thank you. All right. All right, let's get back now to the pushing with our next competitor. She qualified in the second position with a 5-7-2-3 from the Netherlands. It is Shauna Decker. How are you? I'm good. How's the emotion? You feeling good? Feeling relaxed? Pumped up? Pump, yeah, <laughs> pumped up is good. Pumped up is better than relaxed. All right, you know your time to beat. Hop in there. Let's see how you can do. Yeah. All right. It is a Holland Netherlands showdown right now. We've got one in the winner's box, one coming to the line. This is unbelievable. If I was the Dutch coach or the program lead, I'd be pretty excited. I got a 20 year old sitting in the top three here. She's brand new in the sport. We've got um, Judith in the winner's box waiting to find out if her teammate is gonna bump her out of the, the winning position. Helen, I love this fact about her. She broke her back in November of 2012. She's fully recovered now and she is a serious contender for the Sochi Games. That is commitment, that is drive, that is guts. At 20 years old, she's not just a contender for Sochi, she's won for Pyeongchang as well in 2018. Let's give her lots of noise to get her a fast push time. All right, she is pushing to justice by civilization, and here she goes. Out of that start gate, pretty good push for her. Look clean from here at 5 7 6 oh, just off the podium. She is in second, and it is Judith Beach, who still remains in first. Well, enough for a bronze medal still. Uh, not quite as fast as her first time, and falling behind Judith at the, at the start. We've got two Dutch athletes in the lead right now. Yeah, they are one and two. You've got to love that. How did that feel? Um, better. Better than this morning. It was good. And you are only 20 years old. What's your plans for the future in this sport? Um, well, obviously go, obviously go to the Olympics and win one. That's my goal. Yeah. You have a long future in the sport. Are you planning uh, for past uh, Sochi in 2014? Yeah. Yes. Well, great job tonight. Good job and uh, good luck in the World Cup season. Back to you, Nick. All right, uh, well, I would say probably the favorite coming in right here and the hometown favorite as well. Heather Moyes, you ready to go? 
I, I hope so. <laughs> now, let me, I gotta ask you this question. I know you wanna get in there and push. You're, you're raring to go. Rugby, track cycling, bobsled. Uh, what don't you do athletically? Oh, athletically, I was about to say cook, but um, <laughs> to me that seems like an athletic endeavor that I can't seem to master. <laughs> well, you know what, I bet you're a fine cook. I know you're a great bobsled pusher. Hop on out there and good luck. All right, Heather Moyes from Canada. She's in her fifth year of sliding. Here's a quick look at your current standings right now. The Dutch are one and two with Denier in that third spot. Heather Moyes from Canada qualified with a 5-5-3-6. She is pushing to Can't Hold Up by Macklemore. Heather Moyes defending Olympic gold medalist at the line right now, Canadian hero, multi-sport athlete. She's had a two-year break from the sport. What a way to come back, debuting at this WWP push challenge on her home soil in Calgary. She's ready, this crowd is obviously fired up. You can feel them right here. She's on, Bella, the crowd's going wild. She knows her time to be, let's see if she gets it or not. Trying to knock them off, and it will be a five, 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 oh, yeah, she does it. Unbelievable. The first name on the belt, on the championship belt, the winner of the cash prize, the Omega Olympic watch, hometown, Favorite Heather Moyes, PEI Potatoes, powered by PEI Potatoes. Is that is that the key to your success? Of course it is. PEI Potatoes all the way. What does it feel like for you to have taken two years off the sport and now to be back here at, at an event that's all about being a push athlete? It's crazy. We're not used to this. We're not used to this. Uh, I don't know. It's awesome. It's really good to be back. The team feels really good. I'm excited where things are heading going off into this season. So I, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And what's it like to be back with your uh, shared Olympic gold medalist teammate, Kaylee? You guys ready for the season? I think we're ready. We're ready to take it on. And I think we're both excited to see what we can do. You're the first name that's getting engraved on that amazing WWP belt. You're gonna jump back on the sled, ride back to the start, and they're gonna give you your championship belt. Congratulations. Take a ride back to the start. Go see the fans. Oh, it's gone. Heather Moyes is on her way back to the start right now. Well, we're going to send you the sled first, and then we're going to bring her back to the start. That's a good the idea. Sled, you know, it's just an here. important aspect, Helen. If I could ride down in that thing to come get her, I would do it. Okay, <laughs> we're bringing the sled back. Your chariot is on its way. While we wait for her to get back, let's take a look at those final standings. So there you have it. Heather Moyes finishes in that first position with a five. 5-0, oh, Judith Thies in that second spot, and Sana Decker finishes in third. You see the rest of it play out from there. Uh, a real good performance oh, yeah, by the Dutch. Uh, we said right from the beginning that they were going to be very strong coming into this, Heather, and, well, we see it here. But Moise, you and me talked about, was going to be one of the heavy on favorites, and she does not let down with that time. So a 5-5-0 oh for Heather Moyes from Canada. She is your Winsport World Push Challenge Champion. Let's have a big round of applause for her. She's coming back up. All right, let's have a big round of applause for Heather Moyes. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2013 Winsport World Push Challenge Women's champion, Heather, come on over here. It's gotta be the potatoes, right? It's, it's gotta be the potatoes. Of course it is. Congratulations, uh, I, I know that you, uh, you had a chance to talk to Helen down there, but your overall feeling right now, you came into this really driven, really knowing what you had to do. Any secret to your success in coming away as a push champion? On this mono, Bob? Uh, the secret of pushing well on this one is forgetting any kind of technique from the top of the hill. So this is a very different sled, and it's just about like 
being open to change and adapting to what you need to do to push this. All right, you are the champion. Are you ready for your belt? Okay. You get a belt. You get a watch. You get a hat. John Jackson from the Calgary Hotel Association presenting your championship belt. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big round of applause for Heather Moise of Canada. So much has happened here at uh, the 2013 Winsport World Push Challenge, but we're only halfway done. More coming up. The men's competition gets underway after the break. And we are live from Winsports Canada Olympic Park, and I have to say the Ice House has never looked anything like this. I'm sure Winsport doesn't know what hit it this evening. We're having a fantastic time, and I am here once again with Dr. Steve Norris, Winsports Vice President of Sport. How are you doing? This is fun, isn't it? It is. So we always <laughs> had the dream that we'd use this facility for this, so it's fantastic. Well, we're taking this opportunity to learn more about Windsport and what Windsport does. Uh, let's talk about the Active Lives program. The Active Lives stream really is our foundation stream. It's uh, largely there to um, allow youngsters to discover particularly winter sport, but also in the summer months, things like mountain biking. But really, it is our entire public program. So any ages come here and learn about sports. And also, it allows many of the local community clubs to utilize the facilities as well. Well, I know Winsport uh, and you specifically are very concerned uh, with kids and sport and specifically physical literacy. Yes, physical literacy is uh, an area really just like um, literacy normally in the academic subjects, uh, reading, writing, arithmetic. Physical literacy encompasses running, jumping, throwing, agility, balance, coordination, all those type of foundation elements that's so critical, not only for high performance sport, for just basic movement, and really to instill in youngsters a love for being active so that they can grow into being active for life adults. Well, we've got some very active adults competing here tonight. We've seen the women's competition. Now it's time to take a look at the men's field. Helen? We had an amazing uh, qualification this morning in our men's field. Four hundredths of a second separate the top three. We're going to take a look at some of those highlights right now. We have Dallas Robinson from the United States of America sitting in third place. It's a North America sweep in the top six. LaSalle is Brown from Canada. Obviously, uh, a great athlete. He had, he's had the fastest push at the last three Olympic Games. And Jesse Lumsden rounding out the top 10. He's going to be pushing last tonight. He is your leader by uh, only a few, I think it's four thousandths of a second. He, uh, he was ahead of LaSalle's Brown. So it's going to be an amazing final tonight in the men's competition. We are getting a look right now at Stephen Hulk on the American Olympic gold medalist. Yes, Americans, Canadians, all co-mingling here at the Ice House tonight. But make no mistake, it is stiff competition. And Nick, Americans and Canadians both figuring very heavily in the top 10. All right, we have got the men all set and ready to go. So ladies and gentlemen, I ask you again, are you ready? Let me hear you, crowd. Are you ready for the men? Well, then, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to push. Qualifying in the 10th spot, representing the Czech Republic with a qualifying time of 5, 3, 2, 1. Ladies and gentlemen, Dominic. Dvorak! In the ninth spot, representing Italy, four years sliding and a qualifying time of 5-3-1-5. Ladies and gentlemen, Francesco Costa. In the eighth spot with a qualifying time of 5.296. He's a brakeman. 
Gotta love this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, Jacob Havlin! In the seventh spot, representing the Czech Republic, with the time and the qualification of a 5.289. He's been sliding for two years. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Vashik. In the sixth six spot from the United States of America with the qualifying time of 5.226. His hometown is San Antonio, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Olsen. In the fifth spot, representing Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, with a qualifying time of 5.217. In his fifth year of sliding, ladies and gentlemen, Neville Wright. States of America in the sixth spot with a qualifying time of 5.14. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Fultz. Qualifying in the third position, representing the USA with a qualifying time of 5.170. He's been sliding for four years. Ladies and gentlemen, Dallas Robinson. <laughs> Pretty sure there's not much introduction needed for this hometown boy representing Calgary with a qualifying time of 5.112 in the second position. Ladies and gentlemen, Lucellus <laughs> Brown. <laughs> now we all know these guys like to, well, they like to push things. And this next competitor, this hometown boy, well, he's pretty good at pushing things. Have a look at the big screen for our next competitor. So you guys need some work. What do you guys do? Well, we uh, push stuff. Push stuff. <laughs> Back in for food! service back good head ladies and gentlemen with your number one qualifying time of 5.108 from Burlington Ontario Canada Jesse I'll tell you what, Tara, they are ready to go. Let's send it back up to you. We're all set down here at the start. They are pumped and so are we. We gotta take a break. When we come back, we celebrate 90 years of the FIBT.
Welcome back to the 2013 Winsport World Push Challenge. Taking a look at Heather Moyes, who took top spot in the women's competition already today. Men's competition about to get underway. We're not just celebrating, though, the winners tonight of the Push Challenge. We are celebrating a birthday. It was 90 years ago on this very day that the FIBT was founded, otherwise known as the International Bobsleigh and Skeleton Federation. We're going to take a trip back in time now with the voice of bobsleigh, John Morgan. Paris, France, November 1923. A group of sportsmen got together with the goal of getting their sport of bobsleigh accepted as an Olympic sport that could compete in the first ever Winter Olympic Games to be staged in Chamonix, France, just three months later. Delegates to the meeting included Pierre Gaulet of Switzerland. From France, it was René de la Fregalerie. And from Canada, Frank Reichel. From the United States, Alan Muir. And from Great Britain, Major B. M. Patton. Bobsleigh was an active sport that thrived before the turn of the century, but it was the advent of the first Winter Games in 1924 that prompted the formation of a federation. The Federation International Bobsleigh and Toboggan was formed on November 23, 1923, in Paris, France. The first event the FIBT had to manage was the 1924 Winter Olympic Games in Chamonix, France, and the Swiss won the gold medal. Let's take a look at the presidents of the FIBT. The first president of the FIBT, the French Duke René de la Fréglerie, he signed the initial IOC document in 1923. He would go on to be the president through 1960. The second president, Dr. Rodo from Italy, took over in 1960. Between these two individuals, La Fregelli on the left and Rodo on the right, they managed the sport from 1923 through 1980. German Klaus Cotter took over and ruled the FIBT from 1980 to 1994. But Armando Gardella was the general secretary of the FIBT from 1971 through 2012. He still serves the sport in many capacities. In 1994, Canadian Robert Story took over for Cotter. He managed the presidency through 2010. And now our current president, Ivo Ferriani, the president of the FIBT from 2010 to where we are now. Let's take a look at the bobsleigh tracks of the world. The famous Berlin engineer, Stanislaus Zelenki, built many of the tracks in Europe and here in this track for the 32 Olympic Games in Lake Placid. Back then, they would cut ice blocks out of lakes and assemble the natural tracks up and down. But the natural ice tracks gave way to the refrigerated tracks in the early 70s. The concrete tracks built for all the Olympics from 76 Olympic Games on provided high consistent speed and really revolutionized the sport. But in St. Moritz, Switzerland, they still build a natural track every year. It is amazing to see them build this track because what you see in winter is not what you see in summer. As you walk the track in summertime, you can barely recognize what is built in the winter. St. Moritz, Switzerland is the birthplace of the sport of obsledding and the only natural ice track we have left on the circuit. The sleds have really gone through a transformation since the early days when it was a single head first sled. Then they put two sleds together and in 1924 Olympics, they bobbed forward at the start to gain momentum, hence the name bobsled as we know it today. Sled technology started to change from Olympics to Olympics. They started to become a little bit more aerodynamics here in Norway in 1952. The sled of the norm though was the fire oven sled from Switzerland. Pictures seen here recreating the enactment of the sled at this year's World Championships. In 1956, Oscar Podar started building sleds, and the Podar sled was the sled that everybody used for many years. At the 64 Olympic Games in Innsbruck, Austria, you could see the aerodynamic shape start to change. But the real breakthrough was in the late 70s, early 80s, when the East Germans brought technical superiority to the bobsleigh equipment. As we went on to Nagano, you could see the athletes were improving. High speeds on the refrigerated tracks. And the bobsledding used to be the champagne of thrills. It was now the mixture of science and sport. All the way through the Vancouver Games in 2010, the sleds continued to change. The athletes in the sport have one thing in common. 
They're all thrill seekers. But over the years, only five different athletes have won double gold at the Winter Olympic Games. They are on a special list, starting with Andra Osler, double gold at the Oslo Olympics in 52. Then in 1968 at the Grenoble Winter Olympic Games, Italian Eugenio Monti, the second person ever to win double gold medal at an Olympic Games. Monti would go on to be one of the true sportsmen of the Winter Olympic Games, winning 10 world championships over the years. Next up, Meinhard Niemer was the third double Olympic Games gold medalist at the Innsbruck Olympics, and then another East German, Wolfgang Hoppe in 1984 in Sarajevo. Then the fifth person to do it, Andre Lange in Torino in 2006, two gold medals for him. Major rule changes over the years in the FIBT. Let's go to the 1932 Winter Olympic Games in Lake Placid. The Stevens brothers heat their ru uh, runners between runs, and they go on to win the gold medal. That summer, the FIBT changes the rules so that the runners on your sled can be plus or minus three degrees Celsius to a test runner at the top of the track, and all runners are tested before the race. Another big rule change, weight of the sleds and the athletes. At the 52 games, it was unlimited weight. The Germans went on to win double gold. The next summer, the FIBT made a maximum weight for the team and the crews. The sport of skeleton. They slid on the road from Celerina to St. Moritz. And when they put two of these sleds together, it was bobsledding. But the 1928 Olympic Games in St. Moritz, skeleton was on the Olympic calendar. And again in 1948, but it wasn't until 2002 that the sport of skeleton re-emerged into the Olympic Games. And now it is a sport of true athleticism and thrill seekers. And it's become a famous sport for the young and fearless. Women's bobsledding. In the early days of the sport, the rules were five-person bobsledding and you had to have two women on the crew. But it wasn't until 2002 that the women's bobsled did the breakthrough onto the Olympic calendar. Since 2002, the women have come a long way in the sport. The start in the sport of bobsledding is where it got its name. They used to bob forward at the start to gain momentum, hence the name as we know it today. Boy, has that changed in 90 years. The start now is the most crucial element of the sport. Here at the 1932 Olympics, they pushed off the shoulders. Now they got into the cowling, a little hole in the cowling, and then side push bars started popping up. And then they put tacks on the bottom of their sneakers in the 60s. And then Adidas stepped in and developed a start shoe. And since early 70s, Adidas has developed this little spikes on the bottom of a track shoe to gain the momentum for the athletes at the start. A perfect start in four-man bobsledding is called choreography on ice, but sometimes it doesn't always go as planned, as you can see from these pictures here. Athleticism at the start is a key ingredient, but mistakes like this will end a good run. So the FIBT celebrates its 90 years with athleticism, in a sport with true camaraderie. Tactical changes, not only from the tracks, but also in the equipment. But most importantly, the exuberance and enthusiasm that the athletes, coaches, and teams provide are what propels this sport forward. The FIBT celebrates 90 years in 2013. An incredible history lesson and certainly a reason to celebrate. Here celebrating with us this evening is the fifth president of the FIBT, Ivo Ferriani. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I'm proud to be here. It's a fantastic place. Cannot be a better place than here to celebrate this 19th anniversary here. A thanks to Winsport to create this great event. I, I feel like we should have some champagne. Perhaps we'll share some after this event is over. I think so <laughs> after that. And I want to thank the athletes. We have fantastic athletes, create emotion, create uh, a fantastic atmosphere. Without athletes, no presence. So thank you, the athletes. Thank you, the coach, for this great atmosphere. Well, I want to talk about the evolution uh, during your time uh, as, as an athlete and, and as a coach and now as a president. Um, what have you seen in the sport of bobsleigh and in skeleton also? And, and where are we going? You know, it's more and more we are professional. And uh, when I began, we had the big uh, Russian team, DDR team, and uh, they show how we must train. Uh, we must use uh, science to have a better training, to create better sled. And then we learn a lot. Then we professionalize everything. So, and then we 
we have received also the fantastic support of the women. Women come uh, in our sport and the skeleton come back to the, uh, the Olympics. So it was a big evolution. We have evolution in material, evolution in, uh, in the rule, but what stayed the same? The passion of the athletes, the emotion the athletes create. Well, we're certainly seeing that here tonight at the Push Challenge. Uh, an incredible evening, Ivo. Thank you for joining us. Ivo Ferriani, the fifth president of the Fédération Internationale de Bobsleigh et Tobogganing. How'd you like that? Yeah, you say that. No bad in French, too. <laughs> Thank you. All right, coming up, the men push away. Thank you, guys. Now the guys, they must push hard. <laughs>
All right, he's off of the gate right here. The Italians with a great history at the Olympic Games recently. And a 5, 3, 4, 6. A nice push for the Italian. And Helen, he's going to move nice. right into first place. Yeah, that was a great push. You can see how much they drive this sled out, head down, knees, nice pumping action as he heads down the hill, good load. He's running it. You can tell how much farther the men run compared to the women. That's over speed training. And over speed training for an Italian 200 meter champion, right? National champion in the 200 meters for track and field. Yeah, yeah, in 2006, uh, I raced some uh, with an Italian team in track and field. But uh, now, I prefer Bob's leg, I love this sport, and I hope to come in Sochi in February. First Olympic Games, congratulations, great push. You're our leader, back to the start, back to you, Nick. All right, thanks, Helen. Jacob Havlin is next up, qualified in that eighth spot with a time of 5.296. He likes bodybuilding and US movies. I think I love this guy. Hop in there and good luck. The break man, let's see what he can do here. The crowd's pumped up for this again. Trying to beat a 5296. That was his qualifying time. And Jakob is a pretty great all-around athlete. He's listed, I don't know, about five sports in his athlete bio, bowling, football. The guy is an incredible athlete. Czech Republic, obviously a team full of incredible athletes. A world cha our European Championship gold medal in Cortina, one of the toughest tracks in the world from Ivo Danilovic. All right, he's up, Helen, here we go. Let's see what he's got. Also a baseball player. What doesn't he do? Good push right here. We will see what he's got. A Aren't five, you? three, one, six. Not bad, Helen, not bad at all. Not bad, a couple hundreds off of his push this morning, but it seems to be a trend for all of the athletes. It's a close race for the men, always separated by thousands of a second. Oh, you good, man. He's coming down the hill, great over speed, a little bit of an earlier load than the Italian athlete, but enough to carry him into the lead. He's heading to our leader box. He is our new leader with only a few pushers left to go and a hundreds of seconds separating these, these uh, winning athletes. Back to you, Nick. All right, thanks. I'm hanging out with Brendan Arnold right now, the communications manager from SportCheck. It is like the amazing superstore in Canada for everything sport. You know that. Uh, what does it mean for you guys to be a sponsor at this event? Well, first I want to give a shout out to Winsport. This is a fantastic event. Uh, they came to us, asked me to see if we'd want a partner. And it's all about high performance sport, Canadian content. It was an easy decision for us. We're the official sporting goods store of the Canadian Olympic team. We have a bunch of Canadian Olympians here today, so it just made a lot of sense. Now, you guys are also the place to go for the official Canadian Olympic merchandise as well. Yeah, we just launched it about two weeks ago. Uh, Helen and Tara are both uh, sporting a lot of the gear tonight. A bunch of our athletes will be wearing it in Sochi. Um, Christmas is right around the way. High performance gear, check it out. I, I love it, however, I'm American. I don't think I could get away with it, but if you are Canadian and you just love the Canadians, like we all do, go ahead and check it out at SportCheck. Thanks so much for sponsoring the event and for coming by. Thank you. All right, let's take a look at our leader right now. That is Jakob Havlin. He is in that number one sport spot with a time of 5-3-1-6. All right, next up, from the Czech Republic, Michael Vasik. You were ready to go, yeah? Yeah, OK. Excited? Yeah. yeah. All right, you get out there and push. We won't keep you here any longer. He's a national oh. champion of 60 meters and the 200 meters in his country. He will be pushing to three century. From Salina. Now, Helen, he's only been pushing for two years. We see a lot of new or relatively rookie pushers in this competition. That says a lot about the growth of the sport. Not just about the growth of the sport, but nothing is a better recruiting tool than the Winter Olympic Games. And obviously, Sochi 2014 is just around the corner. We're under, I think we're under close to 70 days away from the uh, opening ceremony. So it's an exciting time to be a winter sport athlete. We've got a Czech uh, domination here. With one athlete hoping to knock his teammate off of the leader box. We're going to see what happens here. 5 3 1, time to beat. All right, he's all set. He is fired up. Real intensity at the start line here. 5 3 1, like 
Kellett said that time to be good push. Maybe a little slip at the start right there, but he's off and... But three, three, It's oh. not enough. His teammate stays the leader by a couple hundreds of a second. <laughs> well, Helen, you said it. It is that razor thin in this sport. And, I, you know, we were talking. You said it was going to be won or lost by about that much. Yeah, and he had a small mistake at the start as he came off the block, maybe a little bit of a slip, and uh, still a great push time. I think it's uh, less than two hundredths of a second in t uh, differentiating these two leaders, uh, Czech teammates, obviously showing the, showcasing the strength of this program. Back to you, Nick. All right, well, let's take a look at your current leaderboard right now. Havlin is in your lead. Vashik sitting in second. Justin Olsen of the U.S. is next. It's a beautiful night here in Calgary, Alberta. Welcome back. Uh, we're looking right now at the Mark and McPhail Center. We are currently in the Ice House in the Mark and McPhail Center. Hey guys, I hear you back there. Everybody yell. No, not so much. Yeah, I got a round of applause. Uh, and I get, want to give a round of applause to you, Dr. Steve Norris, joining me uh, once again to uh, extol the virtues of Windsport. What a wonderful facility uh, with such incredible programs. And I want to talk about the elite athletes in training here with the Windsport Academy. Yes, well, the Academy really takes youngsters away from those first steps of discovering sport and allows them the opportunity to progress, certainly from about the ages of 8 to 12. And then after that period of time, they can have the opportunity, they've got the design, the drive with good coaching and good support services to progress further. And this is in partnership with local clubs, the provincial sport organizations and eventually the national organizations. And how do you measure success with the Windsport Academy? Um, quite broadly actually. First off, simply participation and making sure that youngsters are really enjoying the activities, they understand the challenge, they're progressing at their own rates. But obviously there is a sharp end to that stick and eventually we want to see people convert to provincial teams and then on to the national teams. Uh, well, thank you, Dr. Norris. I know how we measure success here tonight. There can be one winner and one winner only. Let's get back to the competition, Nick. All right, there's a look at your leader right now as we enter into a little bit of a heavy North American part of the competition. And we will start it off with Justin Olson. First off, Sergeant in the U.S. Army, I gotta thank you for your service. Cool. Where does the name, the nickname, the creature come from? Uh, it's, it's kind of a long story, but uh, I kind of turn into a creature at times. I, I bet you're about ready to do that right now. Get out there and push. Justin Olson from the United States of America qualified in the sixth position with a time of 5-2-2-6. I think the question up here, Helen, is, is will he turn into that creature? He is going to be pushing the Copperhead Road by Steve Earle. We all want to see the creature, Justin Olsen, two-time world champion, Olympic gold medalist in the night train at the Vancouver 2010 Olympics in four-man bobsleigh, on the block right now, pushing for the United States of America. Let's see if he can move into that first position. It is, like we said, a heavy North American push from here. Neville Wright from Canada will be next, and right after that, it is Chris Vogt, also of the U.S., currently on that night train bobsled team for the U.S. But right now, here is Justin Olsen. A big lift of the sled off the line. You see the whole back end of the sled come up almost out of the grooves, but he gets it back on track, powers it down the flat and down the hill. He is our new leader, Justin Olson from the United States of America. What does it mean to be at a competition like this that features the push athletes in our sport? You know, I think it's a step up. Uh, you know, oftentimes push athletes do a lot of good things. And I think, uh, you know, we win as a team, and uh, now's the time for us to showcase our talents. Nick, back to you at the start. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah, I'm here with Neville Wright. He is pushing next for Canada, an Edmonton native. 
<laughs> they love you. That's got to feel good. You got this? Yeah, I got it. All right, all right. He thinks he's got the time to beat right here. He's going to push hard. Get in there. Good luck. All right, Neville Wright from Edmonton, Alberta. He is pushing for five years now. Let's see what he can't do. A Vancouver Olympian. He is looking ahead to Sochi, and he's pushing to Born to Win by Papoose. Qualified for the time of 5 2 1 7. Helen, he really leads off a very strong Canadian team. Yeah, he's he's one of the fastest. He actually the second fastest uh, national testing time in our program. It was a very tight competition. He is a sprinter from Edmonton, Alberta. The number of track and field athletes that end up in the sport of bobsleigh, obviously showcasing the uh, strengths of what it takes to be good at this sport. Neville right on the line. One of many North Americans in our top six here at this first WWP competition. All right, he's off. Let's see if he can move into the lead right now. It's Justin Olsen of the United States. Here's his push with the time of 5 one, one, one. And Neville Wright from Canada is your new leader. 5 one, one is a massive improvement from this morning. He had a great look at the technique. Balls into the sled. Powerful knee drive. You can tell he was a track and field sprinter. Great technique. And I can't believe how much of an improvement he made. Great job, Neville. Back to you at the start, Nick, with our next athlete. Chris Vogt from the United States of America. He's currently with that night train team piloted by Steve Holcomb, also a member of the U.S. Armed Forces. Thank you for your service. No problem, no problem at all. All right, you are ready for this. You're focused. Yes, sir. Tell me what you're thinking right now. Uh, I got to beat that time right there. That was a very, very fast time by Neville, so try and beat it. All right, Helen, let's throw it down to you. We're all ready to go here at the start. Neville, right, where did that come from? What happened this morning? You just killed your qualification time. I just, uh, you know, dug deep, you know. Uh, did the crowd help? Yeah, it helped a lot. And this event, do you think it's something that should continue for the sport of bobsleigh? Yeah, it's very good for the, for the entire sport of bobsleigh. Yeah, they should continue doing it for sure. And is, is the Canadian team ready for this Olympic season and a home World Cup race? Oh, yeah, we're ready. Okay, great job, Neville. You're our new leader. Back to you, Nick. All right, thank you so much. Chris Vogt is ready to go. I've seen Focus before, and this guy has it. It is the look of a soldier. It is the look of a competitor. Let's see what he's got right now. I love the lead changes and the push. Let's see what Chris has right here. He qualified in that fourth spot at a 5.184. He is ready to go. Chris Fote, newest member of the night train, the famous four-man bobsleigh team, defending world champion gold medals, Olympic gold medals. He actually had the fastest velocity this morning in the qualification. This guy's got incredible top end speed. Our top American pusher, Chris Fote. Let's go, let's see it, let's hear some noise. He is pushing to lose yourself by Eminem. Fast back for you here. He's a captain in the U.S. Army. He served one year in Iraq after he finished eighth at the Olympics in 2010. Six months later, he was fighting for the United States of America in Iraq. I got to tell you, I love that kind of commitment. Let's see what he's got here. He's off the blocks. A good push. Looking to retake the lead. And a 5 0 oh, no. enough to move in front of Neville Wright. He came up the he came up the breaking stretch so fast that the sled almost jumped out of the track. Great push from Chris Vogt. He was behind off the block. He managed to gain gain the leader position with incredible top end speed coming down the hill. Chris Vogt, new leader. Back to you, Nick. Well, we have had a few lead changes, but right now it is Chris Vogt of the U.S. Who's your leader? More from the Winsport World Push Challenge in Calgary when we come back. All right, back inside Canada Olympic Park, the Winsport World Push Challenge. Chris Vogt right now is leading things. We will throw it over to Helen for an interview in just a moment. But right now, I'm at the start with another American, Dallas Robinson. Dallas, you're ready to go, but your compatriots on the leaderboard. You're going to take them down or what? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just happy to be here representing the United States of America. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. 
Get out there and push. Good luck. Helen, let's throw it over to you. You've got Chris. Helen? Yeah, I got Chris, who actually had a bit of a mishap at the start. You're not happy with that push. No, my uh, um, uh, calf cramped up. It's not serious, but it, when I was trying to run it, well, I was terrible. So it's fine, though. I'm in first place for now, but I don't, I don't think that will hold up against uh, Dallas. Dallas, Jesse, and uh, King. So, we'll see what so you think your teammate's going to knock you out of the leader's box? Absolutely. All right, back to you. Let's see what happens. All right, he is pushing to Outsiders by Eric Church. Got to love a little country, Helen. Got to love a little country. Another military athlete. All three of these Americans are part of an incredible military program in the United States. Lots of bobsledders uh, are part of this program. Dallas Robinson, our top American in the final, sitting in third place, 600s from our leader in qualification. Yeah, 5.170. Former track and field athlete, played USA rugby, he's a college track coach, and like every good American, he loves his truck. Oh, that looks good. Let's looks see if he's good. got it. He's in the red, he's in the red, it's not enough. Chris Wong stays our leader. 5.1. One, two, six. So Chris Vogt, as Helen said, is still your leader. That's a great push, though, from Chris Fote and, and his teammate Dallas Robinson. They're our top two competitors. Fote stays the leader. They're congratulating each other here at the finish. Let's go back to the start and check out our next two athletes, our final two. All right, we're back up here with our next competitor. He qualified in the second spot. He's a crowd pleaser right now. LaSalle's Brown from Calgary. You're ready to go, man. I'm ready to cross it. He is ready to crush it. Where's your thoughts right now? You and one more. You know where the leader's at. What's the mentality coming into this? We're keeping it in the house, but I'll be taking it. There you have it right there. That is intensity. Let's get LaSalle's out to that start line. He is ready to go. Olympic silver medalist, LaSalle's Brown, the hometown favorite. He is jacked. He is ready. He's going to be pushing to the world's greatest by R. Kelly. No! We've got Chris Vogt here, so you didn't think it was going to be enough, but it's enough. What's coming next? You got LaSalle's Brown, Jesse Lumsden. Uh, they're the two uh, fast guys in the world. And they're, the, they're the fastest this morning, so hopefully I'm here still, but we'll see what happens. You're excited about this uh, road to Sochi? Very excited. Can't wait to get there. All right, LaSalle's Brown's getting ready. Let's see if you stay in the leader's box, Chris. Helen, he's absolutely jacked up. LaSalle Brown has got a look on his face like nothing I've ever seen. He was the fastest two-man pusher at the last three Olympic Games. He slid for Jamaica, Canada, and Monaco, obviously representing Canada right now. I don't know. This is intense up here, Helen. He's an intense guy. He's been my teammate for years. This is how he rolls. He's notorious for having Fast pushes in all conditions, no matter what. Fastest two men start at the last three Olympic Games. He's an Olympic silver medalist. He's an Olympic bronze medalist. And he is pushing second last tonight. The sun is brown for Canada. All right, here it comes. Trying to beat the time of the American, Chris Boat. We'll see what we got. We got to remind you, there's another pretty talented Canadian coming up next. Jesse Lumsden. He qualified first with a 5 108 right now. Patriot LaSalle Brown, he's off, crowd goes wild, does he have enough? And he does, he's your new leader of 5.064. 5.06, look. faster than his qualifying time this morning, a great job from our, our Canadian LaSalle Brown. LaSalle Brown happy with that push, how did you feel? Let's get that helmet off. So, King, there, you, you had some intensity in your eyes. What does this competition feel like as a brakeman? Oh, this is the best thing for brakeman. Honestly, you get to show your quality and uh, show your style, intensity, and everything and what you bring actually to the World Cup, and it's not just the driver. Right on. Way to go. Back to you, Nick, with our final competitor. 
All right, thanks. I'm up here with Jesse Lumsden. You come in as the number one qualifier. And now in order to come away with the win, you got to beat your compatriot. How are we feeling, Jesse? There you go. He's ready to go, and he likes to push things. Let's get him out there and see what he can't do. Former CFL running back. His father was recently inducted to the CFL this year. This guy is ready to go. He is an athlete. You can see it on his face. He came in as the number one qualifier with a time of 5.108. He's got to beat his compatriot, Lascelles Brown. We'll see if he's got it in him right now. He will be pushing to the immigrant song from Led Zeppelin. Helen, what do you think? I think that this is amazing. That This is a, a Calgary-hosted event. We got two Canadian athletes in the leader's box and it's a North American sweep. We, we train in this ice house facility. These guys, this is home soil. Uh, we got the first World Cup race of the Olympic season right here in Calgary next weekend. You can see all these guys push again, come out to the track on Friday and Saturday. Yeah, that first World Cup will be at the sliding center here at Canada Olympic Park. If you do and you are in the area, you got to check it out. These guys are fast. You've got some heavy hitters. All the big players will be here in this one. Then they go to Park City. After that, they head to Lake Placid, and then it is laser focused to the Sochi Olympic Winter Games. Right now, the only thing on Jesse Lumsden's mind is getting this push championship here in his hometown. Jesse Lumsden, known as one of the best athletes in Canada, coming from CFL, time spent in the NFL, transitions over to bobsleigh, first Olympic Games in Vancouver, finishing fifth in two-man and four-man, looking for redemption in Sochi four years later. On the line, Canadian Jesse Lumsden. comes that push, crowd goes wild, does he have it? Trying to be the winner, here's his time. Bobo on four, Jesse Lumsden wins! What a push, what a push for Jesse Lumsden. He finishes as your number one. Unbelievable. Unbelievable Just time from Jesse Lumsden, that was crazy fast, beating his qualification. First name on the belt, two Canadians with the win. Hey, all three of you guys, back in the red chariot, back to the start to get your trophy. Let's go, guys, back to the start. All right, well, we've got our winner coming up right now, and we've got the belt presentation coming as well. Jesse Lumsden comes away as your winner. Lascelles Brown finishes with the silver, and the American, Chris Vogt, finishes in that third spot. You have a look at the rest of your finishers there as well. Neville Wright, Dallas Robinson, Justin Olsen, Jakob Hovland, Michael Vasek, Francisco Costa from Italy, and Dominic Dvorak of the Czech Republic. And you are getting a look at your winner riding up now on the sleigh. An incredible performance as the Americans do some work, the North Americans do some work. So Canada goes one and two with Chris Vogt of the famed Night Train crew finishing with the bronze. Let's have a big round of applause for your push champion, James Lundstein. <laughs> Presenting the belt will be Kim Jones, the Vice President and General Counsel of Winsport. Kim, your thoughts right away. We're very uh, proud to have hosted this uh, first annual push competition, and we look forward to many more of these. But uh, here comes our champion now. All right, a big round of applause for Mr. Lumsden. Hop on up here. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2013 Men's Win Sport Push Championship, Jesse Lumsden. What a rush, hey, buddy? Yeah, this is a great event. I'd like to thank Win Sport for putting this on. This is a great way to start off an Olympic season, so awesome job by all of our competitors, and I hope this keeps going for years more. Thanks very much, guys. Take both the men's and women's competition on home turf. Coming up after the break, the presentation of the Omega Olympic watches. The celebration continues.
It has been a fantastic night here at Wind Sports Canada Olympic Park. Dr. Steve Norris joining me once again uh, to talk about the fantastic entity that is Wind Sport. Uh, let's talk about the new performance training center here at the Mark and McPhail Center. This is the third and final stage, 80,000 square foot, which really becomes the home for the national teams in terms of training, their sport medicine clinic. Um, it also allows the opportunity for the public to utilize a particular space. And then finally, we have a state-of-the-art cycling studio, the Powerwatch studio, graciously funded for us by B210. Calgarians, I hope you know what you have here. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Norris. Now I'm gonna head to Helen and Nick for your final thoughts on this incredible night, guys. All right, guys, well, they've got some serious swag up here. It's been a terrific competition. Helen, they're coming away with hats, they're coming away with watches, they're coming away with a check, and they're coming away with a championship belt. What an amazing event here at Winsport. I think it's incredible. It's the first time we've hosted. This is going to be an event that continues. We're going to keep getting stronger fields out. It's an Olympic season. These guys are in the form of their lives. All right, guys, congratulations. Let's get you all set with your awards right now. We've got some incredible prizes for you. You've got the belt. You got the checks, but we've also got some Omega watches for you. Evo Ferriani, the president of the FIBT, hooking you up, guys, right here. Absolutely gorgeous. That is some bling, Helen. It is some bling. They're actually Olympic watches. They're beautiful. Omega, obviously, donating those for this competition, adding to the prize purse. It's uh, an incredible prize purse, and what a way to celebrate the push athletes of this sport. If I would have known we were giving away watches and belts and hats, I probably would have entered with you. Yeah. I, I I think we, if we pushed together, we might have come in. No, we wouldn't have even made the top ten. <laughs> hey, guys, you've got some serious swag. How's it feel right now? You were psyched. It's a big finish for you. Canadians go one and two. How do you feel? Oh, that's, that's great, man. I told you. We're going to keep it in here. It is an all North American one, two, three. Uh, Chris Boat, you were psyched as well. You said you had a little bit of a rough start, but you still finished on the podium. Yeah, I feel uh, great about my finish, and these guys pushed. That's crazy fast. So I, it's, I, I, I hope props to these guys. They were unreal tonight. Jesse loves in that cowboy hat. It looks good on you. It's like it was made for you, buddy. You feel good up there? I feel good in that cowboy hat always, especially living in Calgary. It's right here. And you're right next to a fellow compatriot, Heather Boys. What a great push for you. And some serious swag. Two, 2K, a watch, some flowers, a hat. You're all ready to go. Yeah, I need a suitcase. That's perfect. A suitcase, exactly. It's big enough for a suitcase. Uh, ladies, the Dutch. Second and third, a great push for you guys. You're coming on so strong. What does this say about what the Dutch are going to do with the Olympic Games in 2014 here in Sochi? Well, we hope to do better than last time. <laughs> We're just going to rock it. We're ready. <laughs> they're ready, and they're bringing those hats with them as well, I guarantee it, and the Olympic watches. Congratulations again to all of our women and all of our men. What a great championship here in Calgary. We have had a ton of fun. The party continues at Cowboys in Calgary. You don't want to miss that. We'll be there as well. Uh, Tara, I know you're going to be there, so uh, Helen and I will see you. Thanks so much, everybody. You guys did great. It has been an absolutely fantastic evening. Wind Sports Canada Olympic Park, what a remarkable place to be tonight. The 2013 Wind Sport World Push Challenge, the very first of its kind, but you know it's certainly not going to be the last. And don't forget, you can catch all of these athletes next week right here in Calgary for the first stop on the FIBT World Cup Tour. And uh, make sure you get out and enjoy Wind Sports Canada Olympic Park for those of you who live in the area. I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. What an amazing evening it has been. From all of our broadcast team, Wind Sports Canada Olympic Park, we wish you all a great night.